Okay, now that I got your attention, that was just a day at the office in Iraq in 2008. Now this is live, what's happening right now. You can see out my back window of the grow room, and I'm using my WISE uh, camera there. Now, let me just flip this over, and I'll show you another view of that grow room right now. And this is from a different angle. Now in here is all my tomato plants going lining the walls in the Dutch bucket system with cucumbers here on the end. This is uh, Swiss chard in here, pok choy. And you can see the difference in the pok choy here and the one here done in the cracky method. The, the ones in these NFT rails are double what the size of the cracky is. And all of the rest of this is different varieties of lettuce and that that I have in here that I'm experimenting with. The first thing I wanted to do was show you a little time lapse. It's 15, 20 seconds on this grow room gone wild, what it looked like prior to wiping everything out and starting over. At that time, I was not using NFT rails I was using cement mixing tubs that are set up as DWC. Now in this video, I have the DWC tub here and over here is a cracky tub just to uh, do comparisons on that. I want to show you how simple it is to do the changeover on your nutrients. Redoing the whole grow room as far as sterilizing everything and sanitizing it. And all of my perlite and that, I'd give it a bleach bath and then rinsed it a couple times. I'm going to go ahead and drain my reservoir tank again. And I wanted to show you my plumbing setup on my uh, return. Here on the end, I've taken and put a just a, a hose fitting on that PVC and a ball valve. Now I opened this up and I'm going to take and show you this reservoir here. There's approximately oh, 25 gallons of uh, water in there right now. And I'm going to go ahead and drain all that out. Now, I'm going to hook up my uh, pump here and just let it go. And I can completely drain this reservoir in about five minutes. Now, that's going straight out the hose, straight out the door and draining it all. Now all there was in there was water and I noticed down in the bottom you can see some uh, residue and that could be uh, some of the the residue from the fresh wash perlite where I had to add another two cubic foot to, to bring all my buckets back up to full level and fill two more buckets. You can see how fast this is going down. That float was com completely submerged and now it's only half submerged. So this is a, a quick way of being able to change your nutrients and everything. Now I'm going to go ahead and let this run out. Okay, you can see it's been about five minutes and we're just about down to nothing and you can see that there's really very little water coming through with that ball valve open on the other end that's the flow of least resistance so very little is going into the bucket see that i'm right down to the pump there now so i'm going to take and turn that off and we're going to take and disconnect things. Now the way I've done a lot of this is here on this drain vent. I can just pull that out. 
Now that I have that out, I have another drain here that uh, comes from these three center buckets. And I'll pull that one off. And over here, I have my inlet side for my nutrient, and I'm going to take and pull that off. Okay, that's off. And now I'm going to just take my pump, and I can set it up here on top so it's out of the way. I can do the same with my heater and my air stones, and they're out of the way. Pile all that in there. And I'm going to let that water stop running. And when that stops running on that coming back out, I can just lift this up and pull it all the way out and empty what there is there. And it's manageable for an old man like me to take and move it on my own without slopping everything all around. I can go over here now too and turn off my ball valve. I can disconnect my hose. Now I'm just going to put that up and let it drain. You can see we're down to just a little drip. That's about as slow as it's probably going to get for a while. And in here on these three buckets, now what I did here is I hooked all three of these together because and then they uh, they drain from the third bucket. Now what happened here is where your drain pipe needs to be getting progressively lower if I'd come clear to the end here with that pipe then I wouldn't be able to get it to drain into the reservoir and I'd have had a board on this down here to get it lower and I wouldn't be able to get my reservoir out. It's all stuff you want to consider when you do this kind of stuff. Now I'll go ahead and slip this out and you can see it doesn't catch on anything and then right here on the very end I just tip that up a little. I need to take and disconnect my water here on my uh, my reserve reservoir and what I have there on my reserve reservoir I have another ball valve there that I can take and turn that all off on. Now I can just slide this out of here and uh, slide it right over to the door and take it out and dump it and hose it out. Okay, from this point on you guys ought to be able to understand what needs to be done. Okay, I just slid that back in, hook up my reserve line to it. I can turn that on and you'll see that it starts feeding that water in but seeing that I don't have any plants going I'm good to just set this up again. Put my drain back in here so it goes directly into the reservoir. I've got the one that goes on here for the the buckets. I'll set my pump in there. This one just slips right onto that other line that's coming there for the inlet side of that. Put my air stones back in. There we go. We're pretty much set. Now I'm just going to take and bring my hose back in. And I can fill it up.
Now, that's all it takes to do a whole clean out of my reservoir to do that once a month. You can see that it's pretty effortless. Okay, I want to show you a couple other tips here. Uh, if you go to the Dollar Tree, you can get one of these pancake flippers, spatula types, and it makes it real handy for taking and stirring your water, your nutrients, once you have them in your reservoir. A couple other things here I want to show you. Move that fan. I'm going to take and do a test on everything here. I had gotten white mold in here, so I killed everything I had in here, took it out. It was like a mass murder. And uh, then I sanitized everything with bleach. And then I took and uh, put an ozone generator in here for six hours and then let it air out. Now, I'm going to do this test and I'm going to take and put in plants in here in these NFT rails. I've got two of my tubs set up here. This one is set up for DWC with the aeration in there. And this one is going to be just straight cracky with no aeration. And then I'll also have my Dutch buckets. But in my Dutch buckets, I'm going to be having cucumbers, snow peas, and the rest is all going to be tomatoes. For some reason, we don't go through that many peppers, so I'm not going to bother with them. And I do have two grow lights. These grow lights are the Mars uh, Hydros, and they're both uh, 750 watt. Now, you may have noticed on the clock, when I showed it to you, the numbers ain't right. Well, what I did is I took an old pressure gauge and I took and uh, put a, uh, one of those battery-operated clock uh, mechanisms in it, and I even put a piece of tubing on it and run it into the wall because this was a hot tub room and it looked like it was some kind of antique plumbing that I was using. And then up above I also have these two four foot sections of uh, shop lights put together and then I took and uh, used the LEDs. Now when it comes to the plumbing and the PVC and all other than the PVC pipe, all of the fittings in that I get, all of the other, uh, any, anything other than the, just the sticks of PVC, I got from an outfit called Drip Depot. They're in Oregon, flying, and the service is great, and the prices are super excellent. On uh, Everything is from a half, to two-thirds cheaper from them than what you're going to pay at the big box stores. So keep them in mind. I'll put a link in my description if I ever get this video posted. And here on this uh, NFT rail, you can see that this is the way that I plumbed all my Dutch buckets. I took and used, these are a 12-inch riser that I just took and cut off and then screwed in the valve on it and go straight into that. And you can see down here, this stuff is just running, it's just bare liquid. Okay, that's going to do it. And again, you can see here on that setup, I did the same thing with a ball valve and a hose fitting on that. Now, when you order uh, PVC type stuff, where there is no threads in it here, that's called slip. Then you have threaded. Now, if you have uh, pipe thread and hose thread, so make sure you differentiate between them. If you're going to hook a hose to it, you need the hose type thread versus the, the pipe thread. 
Now I just took some of this half inch styrofoam board, cut it the way I needed it, that slips right over all of my fittings here, goes right up there, and I just take a brick and set on there, holds everything right in place, and I don't have problems with the sun. Okay, are you ready? We're going to take and mix up our nutrients. We're going to use Master Blend. Now this is the tomato formula that we're going to use on everything. We just use it half strength on the leafy greens. I'm going to start with 80 grams of uh, Master Blend. I'm figuring this for a 30 gallon uh, reservoir on the strength. So I'm using 80 grams of Master Blend. I'm going to put in 40 grams of Epsom salts with that and we're going to take and put it into a blender for five minutes using hot water. Now you can do master blend and Epsom salts together with no problem and then you want to use your your uh, calcium nitrate as a separate mix. Okay so we got this going. Now put these in a Ziploc bag, seal them up and store them in a cool dark place until you're ready to use them the next time. Okay, I'm going to give this blending process a good five minutes and that way I'm guaranteed everything is mixed. Pour that in your reservoir and now we're going to do the calcium nitrate. We're going to use 80 grams of calcium nitrate. Seal that bag up good and put it in that cool dark place. Okay, we're going to pop that into the blender full of hot water. The hot water helps that calcium nitrate dissolve. Okay, as soon as that's done, we're going to pour that in our reservoir. Take and stir it all together and then check your pH. Now you want your pH to get down in that 5.8 area to 6.1. Use your pH down or up, whatever it requires. Mix that all up and then retest it in a half hour or so after letting this thing go through a cycle to take and move all the liquid left in them buckets into your reservoir. Okay, I hope this helped. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.